Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Colin Chow. And cloud service automation is something that is kind of part of the overall cloud system within the HP universe. Can you talk a little bit about what's new and exactly what it is? Sure, Jake. So let me start off by saying what uh, cloud service automation is about. Cloud service automation was uh, is a cloud management platform that has been purpose built with an open extensible architecture. And uh, that, what that means is that we will provide heterogeneous support for multi-visors, multi-high vendor environments to give customers um, choice, flexibility and choice in the way that they use uh, their existing legacy uh, resources today and uh, future resources or IT investments that they plan to use um, downstream, right? Now, core within cloud service automation is a service designer. And what's so special about that, that particular service designer is that it allows customers, right, to be able to design and orchestrate services to the cloud and to be able to do so fast, right? What I mean by that is that whether it's a simple service design or a complex multi-tiered um, level uh, service design, it's about being able to push applications to the cloud fast for rapid time to value. And that's going to be very important, right, Jake? Because in the future, what's going to happen is that you're going to have a huge throughput in terms of um, applications coming to the, door, to, the, uh, to the door, and you really need a cloud management platform that can run and, and, and ride that wave, right? Now, so, so if I could interrupt for a second, how is this different than, say, um, using like a Puppet or a Docker or something like that? Good question, Jake. So as part of CSA, a cloud service automation, we have extended resource provides today that would actually cover Puppet, Docket, and on top of that, um, legacy uh, resources like OneView and uh, Insight Control, right? And what that means is that regardless of the kind of resources that you have today or microservices that you want to run tomorrow, right? CSA is able to onboard all this resource provides and stage service offerings off the back of that to be consumed, right? In a service catalog by the line of business, developers especially. When you think about cloud service automation um, within kind of the, the overall framework, what, what does this do that is fundamentally different than using kind of the, the external third party solutions like, like Docker for containers or, or things like that? Well, the, the key difference, the key differentiator here, right, Jake, is the ability of a cloud service automation to bridge workloads. We are talking about bridging workloads in the traditional space as well as the up and coming cloud native space, offering one single tool set to manage across the multi-cloud environments to provide that single view, right? So that you can mi minimize management complexities for the customer and on top of that, minimize day-to-day um, -day operating costs, right? And as I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Jake, one of the key things that uh, CSA does very well, especially in 4.5 going forward, is the ability right, to extend multi-tenancy to a new level. What I mean by that, um, Jake, is it's not just good enough, it's just not good enough to make sure that we have multi-tenanted in, in, in nature to, to, to map it to the different organization um, groups. But now, what we've done, right, through CSA 4.5, is to be able to extend and empower the line of business, right, the administrators in the line of business, to be able, for them to be able to stage their own catalogs, to stage their own offerings, on, and this is on top of the day-to-day -day, um, subscription management. This is about empowering the line of business to be agile, to be in control of what they need to do on a day-to-day, -day, but at the same time, right, providing um, peace of mind to the IT guy, the uh, IT operations manager guy in the, in the data center to know that things are being done in the right way and it's part of corporate policy and that is no shadow IT going forward. I think we all would uh, prefer to avoid having any shadow IT. Oh, for sure, for sure. All right, thanks, Colin. <laughs> thank you, Jake, thank you.